before in training for about 23 years and I enjoy my job so much. I customize and write Microsoft Office training courses and deliver the training, run classroom training as well as webinar. So without further ado, let's jump into the agenda for today. I never like to assume that you know anything about the subject that I'm training. So we are going to start from the beginning and we are going to walk our way out. First of all, I'll give a brief introduction on Pivot Table and I'm going to explain to you what is Pivot Table and why is it useful. Next, we are going to take a look at the different ways of creating pivot table from scratch and it's entirely up to you which one of the way you like to use. We'll then go into manipulating and formatting pivot table using all of the pivot table tools that are available in Excel. And I'm going to show you how to change the pivot table layout as well as using the classic pivot table layout. We will look at how you can sort pivot data, filter data with report filter, and slice the data with slicer. If you have never used a slicer before, it is extremely fun. I like slicer and we are going to look at those two soon. And then I'm going to show you how you can update your pivot table as well as how to summarize data in pivot table using functions. Finally, I'll show you how you can create I want you get on the thing. I and visual representation of the data by creating a pivot chart from your pivot table. I'm going to throw in some keyboard shortcuts that will ease you at your work. So let's talk about the first question. What is a pivot table and why is it useful? Pivot table is a data summarization tool used to summarize, sort, filter, group, count, total, or average data in your database. It makes data analysis easier and more effectively by helping you to find a data patterns, summarize data, create accurate reports, and make decisions faster. Pivot tables are most commonly used when you have a large data set, needs to be summarized, aggregated, sliced, and diced for analysis. Well, pivot tables are really one of the most powerful tools in Excel. They have been part of Excel for many years, and they continually to be improved in every new version of Excel. Pivot table allows you to analyze data very effectively. So if you have a large data set in Excel and you put it into pivot table, you will instantly gain much more flexibility in terms of how you can look at that data in various ways instead of just have it in a static table. You essentially move the field or column heading around and view your data in different ways very easily and quickly. This might not make sense to you at this stage, but it will become clearer as we go through some example. I'm going to walk you through some example from beginning to the end in just a moment. However, before we start to build a pivot table, I need to go through some guidelines with regards to the type of data that is suitable for pivot table because not all data is suitable for pivot table. The best data type for pivot table is transactional data. Transactional data is any type of data where each record corresponds to a measurement of something. For example, it could be a record of sales in a departmental store 
or a measurement to the number of visitor on a particular day. Your data must be organized in one record per row and must have column header. Pivot table utilize column headings heavily. So it's really important to make sure your data has unique column headings before you start to build a pivot table. Pivot table don't like blank rows. If you've got a lot of blank rows in your data, pivot table is going to be struggle. Hence, you must check your data, make sure it is consistent, and remove all blank rows from the data. You also must make sure no empty cell in your data. If you've got a lot of empty cell in your data, try to fill in blank with zero or respective text. Now, having said all of that, we are going to begin with our example. This is sales data. I'm going to use, and there are seven columns of field in this data set. The region, sales rep, employee ID, product, date, quantity, and price. So you take a look at this data set, the format is not consistent. For instance, under product, there are some space in front of laptops. Under the date column, it is not formatted in date. And under the price column, it is not formatted to currency. So before you start to build a pivot table, you need to make sure all your data has consistent formats. So let's format the date. Now, in order to select the entire data column without additional empty cell, under the database. The shortcut key you can use is, first of all, you click on cell E2, which we have the first data. Press Control Shift Down Arrow. That will select entire data columns until the end. So we are going to format the dates by clicking the drop down arrow from the number groups general style and we select short date. So the date is formatted. Next, we are going to clean up the price. Format the price, control, shift, down arrow. And we are going to apply accounting style. Okay, to clean up additional spaces, right, in between the data, you can use a new feature called Flash View. So let's type it. Okay, I'm going to type laptops just right next to our database columns. And use the shortcut key, Control E for Flash View. All right, so you notice that data clean up nicely. You don't even need a tax functions, okay, or trim functions like we did in the old versions. All right, I'm going to copy this over. So you can cut it. Paste over. So you notice that entire column now clean up. So bear in mind, if you are going to use flash view, you have to make sure the column you want to perform flash view must be immediately next to your database field without any empty columns in between. All right. So in case your database has some empty rows in between, let's create some empty rows. 
like I said just now, you should not have any empty rows in between your database. So what if you have this result? So the easiest way to get all the empty rows deleted is you go on to the home tab under the home ribbon, click on find and flash. And go to special. Find and select, go to special and set you are going to all the blanks. So, okay. So you notice that if you do that, Excel you select all entire blank cell, including column H, which you use it for your flash view previously. All right. So to exclude column H, you should select your entire database. We can't use the shortcut key control A because there are empty rows in between the database record. So we select all data within a database range. Then we are going to find and select, click on go to special. And we select blanks again. So in this case, Excel only select all the blank rows within your database area, which you have highlighted just now. And let's go on to the home ribbon. Click on the home ribbon, the delete command, and set delete sheet rows. All the empty rows will be deleted there. So you should remove all the merge cell if you have any merge cell in between your data set. So now we are ready to create the pivot table. There are a few different ways you can create a pivot table. One of the way is using the recommended pivot table features. To use these features, you click on the Insert tab and click on Recommended Pivot Table. Of course, first of all, you have to place a cell pointer inside the data area. Click on Insert tab, click on Recommended Pivot Table. So you can select one of the portions of the dialog. Just click one of this, one of the options of it, and just click on OK to build a pivot table. So you notice that the new pivot table will be created on a new machine. And when I click inside the pivot table, the pivot table view pane is shown automatically. You can move it around and try to put it on the right side of your window or you can actually make it floating and you can resize the pane. So the pivot table view pane consists of two portions. The first part is the view list. So these are the field names, the headings from your database. So all those headings will be listed under the first part of the pivot table view pane. The second part is a drop zone. 
there are four different drop zones in this chart, which is filter, columns, rows, and value. So because I use recommended pivot table, the field is populated to the drop drone automatically. I don't have to move it in. Now to remove the field, I can simply uncheck the checkbox or I simply drag the field out of the pivot table field pane. This is how we remove the field from the pivot table field pane. So let's bring it back. Just check the sales thread checkbox. You will have the pivot table. Summarize your database by sales thread and quantity. Let's go through the manual way of creating pivot table. Okay, just now we use recommended pivot table. So if you want to create a pivot table from scratch, so click inside your data area, go to the insert tab, click on pivot table. So the create pivot table dialog box pop up. You need to choose the data you want to analyze with the pivot table. The first option, select a table or range, is already selected. So you can see the table range from A1 until G1463 is selected by default. Next, second option, use an external data source. If you want to use data you have in external Excel spreadsheet, or maybe you want to link to a database and pull the data in to be used in your pivot table, you could select these options. The third option is use, all right, create inside the new workbook. So the option allows you to create the pivot table in new workbook. Finally, the last option is if you turn on add this data to the data model, you can combine multiple data source to build a pivot table. I'll cover this topic in my advanced pivot table course. So click OK. So you'll get an empty pivot table layout immediately on a new worksheet. So currently you have nothing there. So what I'm going to bring in is the date view. So click on the little checkbox next to the date view. This will move the date over to the row aerial. All right, for those who use Excel, 2016, you will get it grouped automatically into year, quarters, and months. Automatically, right? So for those who use 2013, you can right click on the date and then try to use the group command to modify the group. So 
So turn on, month, quarters, and years. Click OK. So this will group the date into three different groups. The years, the quarters, and the month will be inside the heading of your database. So next, we are going to populate some numbers. So for instance, quantity. So take a look at the layout of the pivot table. Currently, we have three levels. Now click X2016 and then move on to the analyze tab. Let's locate the command expand field and collapse field. So now we need to collapse the field. Click, it will collapse the field into years. And if you expand field, you will expand. So if now I select second level, which is under quarter, when I click on the collapse field, so the fields collapse into quarters. If I move on to the years level, collapse, it will collapse into years. So when I expand, you will not only expand to quarter because it's not a collapse quarters. So now I just click on collapse, expand again. So this is how you manipulate the three levels of the years, quarters and date. Now, what if I'm not really satisfied with this layout? So I want to change layout. So by dragging the years into the column area, immediately you are able to compare the data by years, 2016, 2017. All right. So by moving the field and drop them into these four drop zones, your pivot table report will be created automatically. Let's go back to the data. So I'm going to create a pivot table using another method, the third method. When I press Control A, select my entire database, you should be able to find this little icon named Quick Analysis. So when you hover over this little icon, you will get the name quick analysis display. So click on this little icon. You will see five different tabs on quick analysis. Formatting, charts, totals, tables, but one. Of course, we are going to click on tables. Now the first icon is for you to create an Excel table. To let Excel recommend a pivot table to you. You have to point to the next icon. This is the first pivot table Excel recommended to you. Second pivot table, the third, fourth, and this is to create more pivot table. So let's just click on the first one. We are going to summarize our database by region and by price. Click on the pivot table. You notice that the 
new pivot table will be created on a new worksheet. The field pane will be turned on. Region field is already placed in rows area and the price is placed in the value areas. To add new field, I just need to check quantity. So you notice that by using this little checkbox, Excel will move the value field to the value area automatically. When you check on tax field, for instance, products, Excel will move the tax field to the rows area automatically. Now you'll notice that Excel will never move the field to the filters or to the column areas when you check the checkbox. So you have to drag the field over if you need to place the field onto the column area. So if I bring the sales red field to the column area, this is what I'm going to get. So you notice that you will get a pivot table full of empty cell. This is the type of pivot table layout you should avoid. So let's change the view and move it to the filters area. You notice that the pivot table will returns back to the previous two columns layout with a filters on top and this is report filters. Currently, this pivot table show all sales reps sales. Now, what if I am interested in just one sales rep, for instance, and the third? So I can therefore click the drop down arrow Click on Anderson and click OK. So this is the sales by Anderson. And the region is Southwest and West region. And Anderson, the sales is for the product name Printhouse. To clear filters, I just simply click on all. Go back to the drop arrow click on all and click OK. You should get the result back okay, for all the data in your database. So total price and total quantity. So you notice that okay, this report is actually not my expected layout because I'm trying to create sales. So instead of price, we are supposed to do a calculations on our source data table. Okay, let's go back to the source data table. Now, what if now I create an additional column over here? So the question is, just now, when you build your first pivot table, Excel selected column A to G. If now I add a new column H, Excel will not update the three pivot table we created automatically with the new columns H data. You have to therefore, Use the features under Analyze tab, change data source under Pivot Table Tools, Analyze tab, change data source, 
and change the column letter from G to H. And imagine if you have five pivot table, you need to do this five times. This is a very tedious process. What if you have 10 pivot table? So to solve this problem, we are going to format our database as Excel table. Excel table will then convert your data into a dynamic data range. So what you can do is select any cell within your data range, go to the home ribbon, click on format as table. You can choose any colors to begin. So you notice that in format as table dialog box, Excel shows that the range A1 until G1463 is going to be converted into table format. And you make sure that you check the checkbox, my table has here. This will create auto filter on your data header. So when I click OK, you notice that Excel table is created and therefore a table tools will be displayed automatically. Okay, this is the table tools. So what you can do now is to increase a new field, for instance, sales. Type the column heading, press enter, and notice that the table range is expanded automatically. And this is table one. This is the first table we created. Of course, can we name the table if you do not want to use table one. So at this point, I just keep it as table one. Now, to perform calculations, you can use Excel formula. We are going to multiply F2 with G2. So equal F2. Multiply with G2 to calculate sales, we use a formula F2 multiplied with G2. When I press enter, you notice that the formula is automatically copied down the sales column. So when I use this Excel table to create a new pivot table. Okay, click on the insert tab, insert pivot table. So what you will see in your create pivot table dialog box is table one. The new pivot table is going to be created using table one. So when I click OK, you should be able to see the data sales by region. But in your previous pivot table, the sales is not there because this first three pivot table is not built based on Excel table. Of course, I'm not going to delete and rebuild all these three table. What you can do is change data source because the column heading is the same. We just add one additional column H. 
So go to change data source. Press control A. In change data source, select A1, press control A. So the data source is now change to table one. Alternatively, you can also type table one. So when you click OK, now the data source change, the sales is now display in the pivot field. Okay, let's update the second table. Again, go to pivot table tools, analyze tab, change data source, And type table one and click OK. So when I click inside my table, I can see the new sales view is now displayed okay, in the list. So the same, we are going to update the last pivot table. Click on A1, press Control A, click OK to get this updated. Okay, now all my four pivot table data source is already updated to table one. Now, subsequently, if I add one more column, Let's say we put a GST. Based on the sales. Multiply 7%. Enter. Now, notice that the answer is automatically copied down the column. So when you go back to the pivot table number one, you notice that you will not update to the pivot table field automatically because pivot table need to refresh so let's go to the analyze tab click on refresh and click on refresh all pivot table when you scroll down now you should be able to see the new column GST reflected in the pivot table view paint automatically. So when you go to the next pivot table, you should get it because we refresh all pivot table in the same workbook. Okay, GST. What about when you add new record? Let's go back to the data. Control down arrow. Control up arrow will move the pointer to the first row of your database. Or control down arrow will move the pointer to the last row of the database. We are going to add, let's say, a new region because we are going to delete it after all. So A, B, C is a new region, right? Data, not important. I'm going to copy paste first. You notice that new ABC record is added. So 
go back to the pivot table built using the region, we still need to refresh. Pivot table does not update automatically. So go for refresh and say refresh all pivot table with the regions. So you notice that new region will be added to all the pivot table you use region field. Okay, this one we didn't use a region field. So this we didn't use. So only the third pivot table and the fourth pivot table you use region field will be reflected. Okay, let's go and delete the records now. So when you delete the record, From the table, go back to pivot table, you notice that the update is not automatically as well. So you still need to go to analyze tab and click on the refresh command, refresh all. So they will remove the data from the pivot tables. So from both. For the ABC market, it's gone from the table. Okay, let's take a look at the layout of pivot table. This pivot table is only using two fields sales rep in rows area, quantity in values area. So, if I add one more field by just checking the product checkbox, products will be added under sales rep automatically. So, by sales rep, by product. If I make changes, move products above the sales rep, the layout will change automatically. So you notice that you can move around the field, observe the changes, obtain the layout you would like to present to your end user. You can even move products to columns area. You notice that by doing this, you will have a column heading using product name. However, you will get the pivot table full of empty cell. Try to avoid this layout. So the best layout still bring the products and the sales rank. This is the best layout I'm going to show. Now, notice that if I bring in one view in the rows area, your pivot table is two columns. If I bring in one more field in the rows area, you notice that it's still one column. How can you change the layout to make Excel display a pivot table in different column when you bring in different fields? So the layout is under the design tab. Report layout. Go to the design tab, click on the report layout. Currently, we are using compact form layout. So let's change it to outline form. So when you change the report layout to outline form, the result is three columns and the header is now the field name. It's compared to previously the row labels because you have two fields under column A. So once you change layouts to outline form, you will use first column for product, which is your first field. Second column, sales rep, which is in second field and the value aerial 
quantity, which is the last few you put in. So three few in the drop zone, you will get three columns. However, the subtotal is currently above the group, which means all these add up, the subtotal is above the group. So if you want a layout which will display subtotal under the group, you should change the layout to tabular form. So go up to the pivot table tools, design tab, report layout, tabular form. So you notice that the pivot table subtotal is now under the group, right? So after you have created your pivot table report, you can consider to add or apply the style to the pivot table. Now try to select the style which will display a different color on the total row. So just try to hover on it, okay? This is, this is the star that you have different color on the total row, right? Just hover on it, you will notice the style difference. So I decided to use the style number nine. So you notice that the format of the pivot table change right in the pivot table arrows you still can add a banded columns or banded rows so when i click on banded rows you will draw the blue lines horizontal blue line okay maybe you might not be able to see on my screen very clearly let me just turn off the screen line the background grid line we can turn off let's go to the view tab and turn off the grid line go on to the view tab and check the grid lines so when you go back to the pivot because just now i turn on banded rows therefore it is a horizontal line and bend the color it will draw vertical line so you notice that the design of your pivot table improve compared to your previous default style right so these are the three report layout you can consider to use when you build a pivot table the default is known as compact form you have outline form, tabular form, and you can also create a new layout called classic layout. So I'm going to show you what is classic layout. So I'm going back to the data source. Insert pivot table okay this is the new layout to change it to classic layout right click inside this empty pivot table layout and select pivot table options so when you select pivot table options Pivot table option dialog box will be displayed. Click on the display tab in this dialog box and check this option classic pivot table layout. This will enable dragging of the view in the layout. When you click OK, the layout will change. This is the classic layout. So now, when we go back to the view list, 
instead of bring the fuel inside this four drop zone, you can bring the fuel now to the layout. Drop it down, bring the sales fuel. Okay, maybe you just bring the inside the value area. You can also try to bring the product view into the column area, regions and products. I can also make it filter by sales rep. So click on it you will now be able to filter by individual sales rep. And you can also turn on the select multiple items. Now I'm able to select more than one sales rep. So click on the sales rep filter arrow again select all and click OK. So if you off it, you select all and click OK because otherwise you have to turn it off one by one. Now, the report filter can be replaced by a slicer. Slicer is a push button filter. So when I Click on Analyze tab under Pivot Table Tools. You just click on Insert Slicer. Analyze tab, Insert Slicer. And we are going to select the same field of sales rep as the slicer. Click OK. So you notice that instead of clicking down arrow, you just need to click on the buttons to apply filters. To clear filters, just click on this clear filters icons. So select a slicer header. You will be able to click on slicer tools option tab. So under Slicer Tools option tab, you can set the number of columns to maybe two columns, three columns. Just resize under the Slicer Tools option tabs. So when I click on the Slicer button, I am able to do a single sales rep filter. To perform multiple filter, hold control key and randomly click on multiple this right. Clear filters. On the slicer tools, you can change the slicer style by clicking it. So in the pivot tables report, you can change the pivot table style as well. So this is how you make use of slicer to replace the report filters. So finally, I can remove the sales rep filter from a pivot table. So the pivot table is now filtered by one slicer. Click the clear filters. Okay, now I have product view in the column zone. I have region view in 
the rows zone. So when I click on the region filter drop down, I will be able to sort the data ascending or descending by the label, meaning by the region name. So when I sort descending, the region name sorted descending. When I sort ascending, the region name sorted ascending. Click on the product column header. I can sort the product descending as well. So it'll be printers to camera, the name of the product. And I can sort the product ascending from cameras to printers. Now, how about sorting by value? So just right click on the row total. You can sort largest to smallest. So the value is now sorted by high to low. On the column total, based on product, if I want to know which product sells the highest, so I can right click on the number, select sort, largest to smallest. So it will be sorted and this largest to smallest. Okay, so now we are going to apply filter based on region. So of course you can use the chat box filters, but what I'm going to show you is, what about I want all the east, northeast, all right, and east. Oh, I want all the west, midwest, and west. So when I click on the region, I can type west using the search box to filters. So when you type west, the system will compare the region name which contain the word West. So when I click OK, I will get all the West regions. Clear filters. Click on clear filters. So what if I want all the South? South, Southwest. So, Click on type south. But if you have some other data contain the word south in the region, you might need to add an extra. South extra means begin with south. Okay, south extra. So click OK. In this case, you don't have to add because you don't have any other data which contain south. So you use contain is fine. But in case you have many data which contain south at the in the middle or at the end, you just type south, it will retrieve all the data for you. But now if you want to begin with south, you must type south extra, which is begin with south. So click OK, you'll get the south created. Okay, the filters. Click clear filter to remove the filters. Okay, so I'm going to create another pivot table to show you how to use summary functions. So back into my database, insert a new pivot table. Okay. Sales rep, sales, so, 
So sales by sales rep. Now you notice that by default, the value area will calculate total for the value. So what if I want to count how many records are there in the database, right, belongs to Alan sales data. So I'm going to change the functions to count functions. So to change a function, right click on the sum of sales column, select summarize value by count. You will therefore get the count of the record in your database. So in our database in total, we have 1,462 records. So the result will be updated to the values area as well. Now, the same field can be placed in the same areas more than once. So what you're going to do is, back to the pivot table fields, bring the sales field again down to the values area one more time. So you notice that the function sum is going to be used at the same time. So I have count of sales, I have sum of sales. So what if now I want to find out the highest sales value for this 74 record? Which sales value is the highest sales value instead of total sales of 74 record or total sales of 100 for this record? So I can change a function again by right click on the column, summarize value by max functions. Okay, summarize values by max functions. Click on it, you should get the highest total sales for the 74 record, 146 record. Now, again, I'm interested in the sum functions. So I have to drag the sales again to the same area. I will get sum of the sales. Okay, let's change it. This is number of transactions. Once I change my column heading, you notice that it will be updated to the values area automatically. This is highest sales. So you'll be updated to the value area as well. This is total sales. The total sales will be updated to the values area, the header. So we are going to format the data. Now, instead of format cell, I suggest you use number format. Because if you use format cell, you need to highlight all the numbers you want to format. So based on one cell, you just go for a number format. Right click, number format. Select accounting, or you double click accounting. So the total sales will be formatted, and go back to the higher sales, right click, number format, and you have your total sales formatted to accounting as well. So to rearrange it, you can just move the field. That means number of transactions can move down. So I have number of transactions. You can add quantity below, track it. Now I have quantity. So if you decided to remove, just remove it. Right, now you have another way to create a pivot table quickly is by copy and paste. Control A, Control C, copy. 
if you just use a normal paste command, you notice that column G and H display hashes. That means the column width is too narrow. So instead of just do a normal paste, when you copy a pivot table, I suggest you go to paste special and you select keep source column width. All right, so another way to create a pivot table is by copy paste from your previous pivot tables. So click on keep source column width. We are going to remove the total cells, the higher cells, number of transactions, and I'm going to put in quantity. So you notice that the pivot table you copy paste is not linked to your source pivot table. So is this a copy of a pivot table? formats, layout, but the pivot table still based on the same source data, the sales data. So therefore, in the new pivot table, you can make changes to the fillers. So by making these changes, I will have a different pivot table display on the same worksheet. All right, the last topic I'm going to cover with you is the pivot chart. So based on this pivot table, the header is row label. So if you want, I want to display the header based on the field name. I will go to the design tab. Click on the report layout and use tabular form. So the tabular form will show the field name as the column header. Your grand total is at the bottom. Okay, to create a pivot chart, simply go to insert tab and select pivot chart under the insert tab. So you'll notice that if you go use through insert pivot chart, Excel will only offer you the default column chart, which you won't be able to see the quantity because the quantity value is very small compared to the sales value. And currently the chart is using only the primary axis on the left hand side, the Y value. Now, you need to create a combo chart which will create a secondary value on the right hand side of the chart to display the quantity value. So therefore, the fastest way is not insert pivot chart. Since you know you need a combo chart. So go back to your pivot table. This is your source data. Go to the insert tab and go for a combo chart. So you have to prepare three columns. In order to create a combo chart, at least three columns of data must be prepared. The label is sales rep. The column chart is total sales which is primary axis on the left hand side of the chart. The last column is secondary axis data, which will be displayed on the right hand side of the chart later. So we click on insert combo chart. If you choose the first one, you notice that the secondary axis is not in the first style. You should use the second style. Clustered column line on secondary axis. Click it. So the first chart I'm going to delete. So this is the combo chart I just created. So once the pivot chart 
is created, notice that the pivot chart tools will be displayed. There are three tabs on pivot chart tools. Analyze tab, design tab, and format tab. Right, back to the analyze tab. Now on this pivot chart, you can find those few buttons displayed on top of the chart, on top of the legend, and at the bottom, which you can do your filters. But you know that you can add slicer as a filter. Therefore, instead of keeping it, we are going to hide it. So on Analyze tab, click Fill buttons and select hide all on analyze tab click fill buttons hide all fill buttons on the chart right so the legends i'm going to move it to the top so i can make use of the little tools here which is chart elements tools legends top so that will make the charts slightly bigger when you move the legend to the top of the chart the chart will be slightly bigger so when i just have to resize the chart So when you drag the chart bigger, so you notice that the chart will be displayed until the label alignment is horizontal. If your chart area is big enough, so slowly I'm going to reduce the size of the chart. So you need to use this if you want the label to be displayed horizontally. Of course, you can change your font size. Go to the Home tab, select the label font. Go to the Home tab, you can change your font size. All right, so based on this chart, I'm going to add the title for both axis. Go for the axis title. On access title, access title. So you can type the titles over here. Okay, data labels. If I turn on the data labels now, you notice that you can't even read the data label because most of the data label overlapping. What we can do is you can choose to just display the data label for line charts. So select a line, click on the more data label options, and you can select above. Data labels, side buttons, select above. Next, the grid line. When you do not need it, you can turn it off. So we are going to turn off the grid line. So the sales data, this is your sales rec, the titles. And this is quantity. This is the sales. Now, 
How about the alignment? What if I do not want to make my chart very large? So I have to drag it and you notice the label now align diagonally. So we can make changes by using format axis to make it turn vertically. Right, so right click on this data label, select format axis. You notice the format axis task pane will be displayed. We are now at this first step axis option, but you are going to select the second tab, size and property tabs. So on this size and property tab, you can see text direction is currently horizontal. It is diagonal because the chart is too small. So we have to click on this text directions and rotate all text 270 degrees. Rotate all text 270 degrees. So this is the result 270 degrees. You can also say 190 degrees. So the tag will be rotated facing the other side. So I prefer 270 degrees. So format axis. So this one you can close it. This is how you can format category axis. Next, how about the vertical axis? The value axis, you can format it to display different units like thousand or millions. So to format the value axis, right click on the value axis, select format axis. Take note of this display units. So click on it and say I want to display as millions. So the unit millions will be displayed next to the axis. So you have 0 0.5, 1 million, 1.5 million, 2 million, 2.5 million. So close this. Okay, now we can change the color of the chart. You can either use the star, chart star icon to change the color. Or just click on the chart, column chart. Go to the home tab and select the color from here. For the column chart, you can use the fill color command under the home tab. Otherwise, you can also use the, the chart star button, click on the chart star or click on the color tab to change different set of color. But that will change the entire chart's color. So I just want the column chart to change color. Therefore, I'm not going to use this color scheme. So just select the bar, go to the home tab, you can just choose to choose to change the color of the column. All right, so when you are still selecting the column, this is where I'm going to display the data labels again. And this time, I have to display the data label inside base. Okay, you can do outside and, but it's overlap. So find locations. Okay, try to display your center. The rest are okay except for this because the value is too small. So in this case, you can start to move one of the value. You can move. Just drag and move. So I drag the value for quantity up 
and you notice the leader line will be displayed automatically. So when you start to modify the location of one data label, the chart will display the leader line for the data labels. Okay, finally, I can add slicer to the chart. Select the chart, go to the Analyze tab, insert slicer. We are going to add region slicer to filter all the sales reps data. So click on insert slicer region. Click OK. You can see all the region name. Okay, including the deleted ABC. Now how to hide this button without data? You have to use slicer setting. Okay. Hide item with no data. I repeat. Select the region, go to slicer setting, and click on hide item with no data. Region. Those items without data will be removed from the slicer. So now I'm going to use my region slicer at the top of the chart. I am going to change the number of columns for regions buttons. Six columns because I have six regions. Column change to six. We have six columns, six regions. Now you just simply size the charts and put it side by side like this. This is going to be your final report. The slicer color you can change. So I'm going to change my pivot table's color. The style as well. Go to the design tab. Pivot table tools, design tab. Change the style. So finally, I'm going to turn off the grid line on the worksheet. Click on the view tab. Uncheck the grid line. Now I can take a look at my report by region. East region, Midwest region, Northeast, South region, Southwest region, and West region. If I want to compare Midwest, Southwest and West region, I simply need to hold control key, click on Midwest, Southwest. Okay, West is already selected. So this chart will display the result from three different regions. So when I click on clear filters, you'll get filters clear and the result will be displayed. Now on the right hand side, if you want to format the quantity to display thousand separator, you have to format your source data. I'm not going to change the units display, so you don't have to go to format axis. We go to format axis just now because you want to display the unit as million where your source data is not displayed as million. But now, because I just want to add thousand separator on the secondary axis value, I need to do a number format on quantity color. Number format, number, zero decimal places, turn on thousand separator. Okay, this is how you can format to include thousand separators in the volume. Click OK. So once the source data formatted, the value on the chart, secondary value will be formatted. 
So this heading we are going to change because it's going to reflect on the legend sum of quantity. I'm going to change it to total quantity. You cannot use quantity because it's the field name of your database. Column heading of your pivot table can be any name except your database field name. So we have to use total quantity. So notice that once I type total quantity, you will be updated automatically to the legend. All right, so next thing, very important is don't forget to format the value on the chart because the most important elements on your chart is not the color and the start of, style of your chart, but it's the value. So I normally would like to make it bold or increase the font size. And I might want to do this as well, use the same color. So, Similar to the column charts value, bullet, make it bigger size, and you can also change color. Okay, so if you want to apply color over to here on the primary y axis value, secondary y axis value. So you may do this right? for the last step to format your charts. All right. Now, our today's free webinar will be up to here. Right? So I hope you guys learn things that you can apply in your daily work straight away because it's the basic pivot table features whereby you can just create a pivot table from your source data. Thank you for your time. And then I hope to see you next time in the next webinar. Thank you. I hope you like my webinar. Bye.